Now, the first thing I want you to note about this test is that I'm going to reduce the fuel quantity down to 10%. So the tank is 10% full, which gives me 55 pounds of fuel. Now, we're going to have to convert that 55 pounds of fuel to gallons because the Spitfire manual gives us the consumption in gallons. So we're going to do that little calculation later. Now, the specs I'm going to run at is plus 2 pounds of boost pressure and 2400 RPM. So we should be looking for 61 gallons of fuel consumed per hour. So there's going to be a few conversions we're going to have to do after the test, but this is just to show you 10% fuel gives me 55 pounds. I will be conducting the first test at 1,000 feet, and the weather conditions are basically, let's just have a look here, midday, and we'll go with the 15 degrees, which is the normal kind of testing temperature. So there we have it. Let's go ahead and conduct this test, and we're going to time how long the aircraft stays airborne at plus 2 pounds boost pressure and 2400 RPM. Right, we are ready to test. Now I'm going to press unpause in a second. Here we are at about 1,000 feet. And the first few seconds are going to be me fighting to make sure we're trimmed. The cockpit instruments are going to align with my HOTAS. So the fuel may starve. I may have to quickly um, turn the fuel system on. We'll just see how it goes. And I'm also going to start a stopwatch um, that's running on my browser at exactly the same time. So three, two, one, go. Okay, the nose is just dropping. And there's the fuel system just shutting off. Let's we'll start that up. There we go. So we've lost a few seconds there, but that won't do any harm. Plus two pounds boost pressure is there. 2,400 RPM. Okay, let's go. So we are 17, 18 seconds in. I'm keeping an eye on the stopwatch to my left, uh, to my right rather. So it's on another screen. You'll see my head doing that. That's just me checking the... Stopwatch, 30 seconds, still got plus 2 and 2400, I'm going to reduce RPM just a fraction and I'm just going to try and arrest that climb because that's going to change the uh, boost pressure and the RPM slightly. Try and maintain that, I'll add a bit of cockpit lighting in here just so we can see the instrument's a bit clearer. Trimmed out, level flight, slight descent but that's okay. Coming up on one minute. So Utah Beach over there, by the way. And you can see the um, ocean, actually. I've discussed this in other fora. The ocean is just completely flat, dark blue. And this is down at 1,000 feet. The sun is directly overhead. And there's absolutely no light reflecting off that surface at all. It's really, really strange how they've decided to model the reflectivity of the um, of the sea surface. That's 1 minute 50, so we're coming up on 2 minutes. Just rechecking. Boost pressure's fine. RPM's just crept up a fraction, so let's just hold that on 24. That's 2 minutes now. Yeah, the ocean. I have real problems with the ocean. You can see when I zoom in, there's just a little bit of texturing, and you can see some reflection of light. At this level of zoom, I may as well just be flying over a, a non, almost non-light absorbing carpet. They've really done quite a bad job with the, uh, the surface of the water. And this is the same on the low settings, and it's exactly the same problem on the high settings. But it's irrespective of what setting I have for the water, I get the same issue. Still on plus 2, 2400.
can see we've got slightly less than three gallons in the tank. But remember, the manual states that we should be using five, five pounds per hour. Okay, we are actually getting a little low, I think, here. Um, the altimeter was not set. Um, we spawned in at a thousand feet, so ignore the altimeter. Because I would say we're below a thousand. Now make a very gentle left turn here, so as not to climb or descend. Still showing plus two pounds and 2400 RPM. That's all jolly good. That's three minutes and 30 seconds now. Let's have a quick check of the fuel gauge. Hasn't really moved much. That's good. And you'll see that down here at this setting, I am getting 240-ish miles per hour, which is tolerable at this kind of altitude. Gently rolling the wings level now. A little bit of right rudder trim required there. Still got 2400 RPM and plus two pounds. Very good. Coming up on four minutes and 30 seconds now. Feels like we're just drifting a little bit here. Maybe a fraction of wind, but I don't think so. You can see I've got the C to turn to the low resolution there. That's why the C textures are very low res. Um, I'll can turn those up to high. Um, which I normally have them on high, but I'm just uh, running this test on lower resolution. But the the C, the problem with the reflectivity, as I said before, occurs irrespective of whether I have the C textures, or the water textures on high or low. Okay, let's have a quick check of the fuel situation down here. Oh, down to about one gallon, one and a bit gallons. Passing Sword Beach, I think. Or I think it's Sword Beach over there. The first of the three non-American beaches. Still holding 240. Very, very slight climb. There's no way I can judge my altitude above that water. It's just very, very difficult visually to see how high I'm in. How high am I? You would never have a clue. You can tell when you're looking at the land, absolutely no problem. But for some reason, this water... Anyway, I can keep reiterating the same point. It's because I've got nothing else to talk about, you see. I feel this inherent need to blather away about crap the whole time very close to zero gallons now so we may start experiencing some splutter and i am going to fly until this engine completely dries up so that may mean i have to just use a little back pressure at some point to maintain positive or well, more than um, one g just to keep the fuel flowing in and we'll see We have actually climbed since I last was talking about our altitude. It's very hard to tell visually. I feel like we're almost skimming the wave tops, but we're not. Let's just angle ourselves over towards the coast and we'll fly along above land. Because the land's very flat, we don't run the risk of climbing. We just went past the seven minute mark. Needle is showing right on the zero now, so we are not sh we're not indicating any fuel left in the tank. 
So we can expect the engine. To, there we go. The engine's just starved. That's out of fuel. Seven minutes fifty. There's a tiny bit there. Okay, I'm going to go with seven minutes and fifty-five seconds. We're completely out of fuel. Oh no, there's a tiny bit. Yeah, let's go with let's go with eight minutes. Because I've got no I've got no RPM and I mean the aircraft is not flyable in its current state. You can see we're just Oh, there's the actual shutdown there. Okay, let's No, I can't there's nothing in the tank. We're going to go with seven minutes. We'll go with eight minutes. Okay, I'm going to give them some leeway. Oh, we may just get down onto the beach here and try an emergency landing. Flaps, gear. I don't know if the gear's going to come down in time. Oh, and we've rolled onto the roof and crushed a few things. I think the pilot may have survived. Let's have a little look from the outside. Yeah, I think we survived that. Probably a bit of a sore back for the next few weeks, but hey. Hello, and look at the sea. Look how black it is. And this is at a low angle. It's just basically a light, completely light absorbing. There's almost no light reflecting off that surface whatsoever. That's quite bad. Anyway, so eight minutes. Now let's do a few calculations, shall we? So let's look at some calculations. Now, aviation fuel for the purposes of weights and balances in the US is six pounds per US gallon of fuel. And a US gallon is 0.833 imperial gallons. Now remember, we had 55 pounds of fuel so that gives us 9.16 US gallons or 7.63 imperial gallons. Now the consumption rates in the manual are in UK or imperial gallons. So we've got 7.63 gallons in the tank. Now I flew for eight minutes. And in the eight minutes, I consumed all of that 7.63 gallons of fuel. So therefore, in an hour, that equates to 57.225 gallons. Now that figure is just a little bit below the stated figure of 61 gallons per hour. So we can take into account the fact that my engine settings might have been slightly off. I've rounded the figures ever so slightly. The stopwatch won't have been started exactly on and exactly off at the right time. Plus I gave us about 15 seconds leeway potentially at the end. So the DCS uh, fuel consumption, at least at 2400 RPM and two pounds boost is so close to the stated consumption in the manual that any differences are negligible. So there we go. It very much looks like consumption rates in the Spitfire 9 are pretty much bang on, at least insofar as these parameters are concerned. I would advise players who are looking to conduct long flights to use these low fuel consuming settings. Thanks, everyone. See you again.